Hi guys, welcome to another Projection 3D video tutorial. Today we will study some advanced modeling techniques. We will use different tricks and methods that will help you achieve the desired result fast and easy. So let's start. First of all, let's project this lonely house. Press Find Camera and adjust it. Helper grid lines will help you orient. All right, now let's create a projection. Make two copies and press OK. Double click projection scene one. So let's create a ground plane to generate the position of the house. Let's generate position of the front wall and create a plane from two points. Second position. Okay, great. Now let's create a plane using generate plane from two points option. Reduce it a little. And adjust it. Okay guys, now, as you already know, we must draw a mask to get a front wall. Great. Now let's extrude and see what happens. Select the mask. Change extrude direction and press create surface. As you can see, we've got a rough model. And as you already know, we'll have to create some animated masks to clean it up. But this method is actually takes a long while and it's very boring, so we'll do something else. So now I'll show you another technique. So remove this extruded surface because you don't need it anymore. Duplicate mask surface by pressing Ctrl D. Now drag it to the back wall of the house. Great, adjust the mask. All right, let's check the result. Okay, now select both layers and open Mask Modeler tool. Click Create Surface. Great, we have a clean model. Now we only need to close the front hall. Remove this layer, we don't need it anymore, and leave this one, it will be the front face. As you see, the house model is ready, so there is no need to create any masks. You can group these parts, but first let's duplicate this one. We needed to create another part of the house. Now select and press group. Great. All right, let's see it. Let's just fix this last part now. Go back to projection scene one, select duplicated layer and move it back a little since the right side wall of the house is a bit behind the front wall. Now drag to the right so that the surface covers that part of the house. Delete the mask. Should draw a new one. Okay, so let's check it. Well done, almost ready. We just need to create this small surface now. So generate position points and create a plane. Now draw a mask. Okay, looks like our projection is ready. Let's go ahead and animate and see what we have. Oh yes, don't forget to add a surface for the background.
pre-render. As you can see, this method is very fast and it really simplifies all your tasks a great deal. Modeling can be applied the same way on the car that we projected in the main tutorial. Just duplicate this layer and drag it back. Now edit the mask, but do it carefully. Don't move the vertices too far from their original area. That's it. Now select both layers and click Create Surface. Oh yes, and increase the mask offset value up to 1 or 2. And it's done. Remove this layer and enable this one. Now select these layers and press Group. Using this method you can create a clean model and there'll be no need to use animated masks. But this method does not work in all the scenes. Not in this scene, for example. I use the cylindrical surface to create a coliseum. A cylindrical surface consists of many polygons and we can mask each of them separately inside a composition. So therefore, we should create animated masks here in the main composition. Nevertheless, this modeling method eliminates the need to create animated masks 90% of the time. So now that you know this new technique, let's complicate the task. Let's model a house with a chimney and balconies. So press Find Camera, match it, turn on the right side of the helper grid, it'll help you orient. All right, that's enough. Now look at the lines. The lines coincide with the image lines, so it looks like we've adjusted the camera correctly. Now let's adjust the horizon height. Great. Select camera and image and click Create Projection. Make two copies. Now double click projection scene 2. We should create a ground plane to generate the position of the house. It looks like the green stuff doesn't let you see the orientation line of the house. So I guess you can draw a line in your mind. Okay, let's generate a second position. So go ahead and draw a line in your mind. And this is where our second point should be. Okay, select both controllers and press Generate Plane from Points. Now let's draw a mask to get a front wall of the house. Alright, let's do this. Now that we have the front wall of the house, we can extrude and get the rest of the walls. So select the mask, open Extrude tool and press Create Surface. Okay, we just need to scale it a little along the z-axis. Alright, the walls are ready, so let's go up to the roof. We have a point of contact between the walls and the roof, so let's generate a position in here. Add a plane primitive. Now we should copy the orientation of the house in the scene and paste it on the primitive so that it has the same orientation as the house. Okay, well done. Now open the anchor point editor and move the primitive without touching the anchor point. Find the right point. Great. Now that we have the front wall properly oriented, we can rotate it 90 degrees and get the orientation of the side wall and also the roof. So let's do that. Well done! Let's reduce and adjust our plane. Move it to the proper place. Ah, 
Okay, now we need to tilt it to the right. Okay, cool. We now have a part of the roof. Duplicate it and change anchor point position. Don't forget to uncheck this box to move the anchor point, not the object. Rotate the new one to the right tilt. Great, our roof is now ready. Let's switch to custom view to see what we just did. As you can see, we did a great job. Go back to active camera. Now we need to create a chimney. First, let's generate a position for it. So add a cube primitive copy the house's orientation and paste it on the cube. Now we need to place the cube in the correct position. Whoops, I forgot to check reposition only anchor point thing. Return anchor point to the center. Now find the right point. This seems to be the right place. Now you need to reduce and adjust the primitive. Disable scaling on all axes and adjust the scale for each axis separately. All right, it's done. Uncheck this and change anchor point position. This is the point of contact between the wall and the top of the chimney. Let's create a plane primitive right here. As you already know, we need to copy walls orientation and paste it on the plane. As with the house, here we also need to rotate it 90 degrees. Great, now reduce the primitive. And place it to the right position. Move it a little to the left. Now rotate. and adjust the scale. Okay, copy it and let's make the other side. Well done, our chimney's ready too. Time to make a balcony. Let's go ahead and generate position for it and add a cube primitive. Copy the home orientation and paste it on the cube. Then place the cube to the proper position via anchor point editor. All right, now adjust it a little bit. Looks like some rotation needed. Okay, cool, looks good. Let's switch to custom view to see what's happening. Well, looks like we did a great job. There's still lower balconies, but I think you already know how to deal with them. So this is how the house looks in the main composition. As you can see, using this technique, you can do modeling of any complexity. Now we can select all parts of the house and group them into one object and give it a name. Now let's move on to the last stage of our tutorial and create a full scene using different tools and techniques. So drag your image to the timeline and press find camera. Use 28 millimeters. Now match it. 
Actually, I think 15mm was used in this scene, but using this camera I noticed that distant objects are very far away. That's why during animation it feels like only the river is moving. We should see a beautiful vector movement, so I'll use 28mm. You know, sometimes you shouldn't play by the rules if you want to get a beautifully rendered animation. Okay, our camera's ready, so select layers and press create projection. And make three copies. Double click projection scene 3 and create a ground plane. Let's start with the building. Go ahead and generate a position for it. Now create a cube primitive and place it to the right position using anchor point editor. Now we should find the building orientation in space. So scale it. And set X rotation to minus 5. Now rotate along Y axis. Set Y rotation to 23. Great! This is what we need. Let's adjust the scale along all axes now. Uncheck and reposition anchor point. Create a plane primitive in that point. Set X orientation to 0. Okay, now we need to move the plane without touching the anchor point. So I'll mark that option and do it. Now copy cube's orientation and paste it on the plane primitive. I'll just put 90 degrees on Y axis. Let's calculate. 23 minus 90, that equals minus 67. So set that. Great. Now reduce the scale. And it's ready. Now we need to move the anchor point to the top to create the positional point for the roof. And create a plane on that position. So I'll move the plane over here. Copy building's orientation and paste it on the plane. Like so. Okay, now we need to reduce and tilt it a little bit. Good job, guys. Now let's create the side of the roof. So reposition anchor point and create another plane. Zero orientation. Move it to the right position through anchor point editor. Now copy the building's side part orientation and paste it on the plane. Well done. Now let's reduce and tilt it. Great, we almost have all the parts of our building. Let's create the last missing part. We should move anchor point for that. Then create a plane and adjust it like we did before. Copy our orientation and paste it on the plane. Reduce it. That's it. Now we have all the parts. Okay, now we need to draw a mask along the contours of the roof. So let's do that. All right, done. Increase shadow map resolution to get the best quality.
Okay, let's check it. It's good. Now for the second part. Let's mask it. Cool. And the last one? That's it. We're done with our building. Now let's select all the parts and group them into one object. Let's check it. Awesome, right? And so the building model's ready. Let's move on to the far river bank. First, we need to generate position points. Then select both controllers and create a plane using generate plane from points option. Cool. Reduce it. Check this box and move the layer using anchor point editor. Reduce along x-axis. All right, let's see it from the custom view. Yes, everything seems to be in order. Now we just need to mask it. Congratulations, the riverbank's ready. Now let's get to a tree and a bush over there. First, let's create a bush. So generate the position of the bush. And now import this image called left bush. Scale it. Move it to the left a little. Also rotate. Okay, it looks perfect. Now generate position for the tree. So I'll import this image called tree. I'll scale and adjust it. Okay, guys, looks like we need to adjust the position of the anchor point since it's in the wrong place, like so. Now move the tree to the correct position, scale it again. Great, that's just perfect. All right, this part is ready. Let's see what we have so far. All right, now let's make a bridge. Let's start by generating a position for it. Generate a second point. Okay, now create a plane using these points. Now, using Anchor Point Editor, go ahead and reposition the plane. Adjust the scale. Let's see from a custom view whether or not a primitive plane was created in the right place. That's right, the bridge will start right from the shore. Okay. 
And now, as you may have guessed, we should draw a mask along the contours of the bridge. So let's do that. And it's done. Now open Extrude tool. Set negative value and click Create Surface. Whoops, don't forget to select the mask. Move anchor point to the lower left corner, but don't forget to uncheck Reposition Only Anchor Point. Open the Scale parameter and scale created surface using Z axis. If the bridge model doesn't match the picture, then it has the wrong orientation and it needs to be fixed. So we need to rotate it along Y axis. As you can see, with this orientation, the bridge model matches the image. So what will we do then? Then we'll remove this model Fix the plane orientation with the mask and extrude again. Move the anchor point to the lower left corner and rotate 9 degrees along Y axis. Now we need to fix the mask. Great, now the plane have a right orientation. So select the mask and press Create Surface. Scale it along Z axis. Well, that's strange. It doesn't quite match, as you can see. Probably we should have rotated it 10 degrees. Yes, that's it. Let's delete this and rotate it 10 degrees. Fix it up a little. Perfect. Now select the mask, mark front face and back face, and press Create Surface. Move anchor point and scale along Z axis. Finally, now it's just what we need. Okay, now let's create a tree. Switch to top view and move back the plane that we've created for the bridge. Now we need to generate the position of the tree behind the bridge. Go back to active view and generate position. Good. Close Extrude tool, we don't need it anymore. And import image called Bridge Tree. Double click the tree and adjust the anchor point position. Okay, now the tree is in the right place. So let's scale and adjust it. Maybe we just need to rotate it a little. Maybe just a little bit more. Doesn't matter actually, you can leave it like that. Now let's make a position for our lamp. But it looks like we moved back our plane we've created for the bridge. Don't worry, we'll create another one in a second. So here we have Generate Plane from Bounding Box option. Click it and choose Front. All right, good. Now let's generate Lamp Position. So import the lamp. 
cool. Scale it. Let's see how it looks. Well done. The scene just looks better and better. All right, guys, let's create the right bank of the river. We'll do it with mask modeler. So select our ground layer, generate position and create solid on that. Again, generate position, create a solid. Do the same thing again. And just one more time. All right, done. Now using these layers, let's create a river bank. So select the farthest one and start drawing a mask along the contour of the shore. As you know, to make sure Mask Modeler works correctly, all masks and all layers must have the same number of vertices. So if you don't want to count, you can just copy the mask and paste it on another layer. Now adjust the mask. Okay, good. Again, copy the mask and paste it on another layer. Adjust it. And do the same thing one last time. Okay, well done. We did it. Now select all layers and open Mask Modeler. If you want, you can mark Show Masks to see how it looks. Press Create Surface. Let's see the result in the main composition. Oh, that's just great. Okay, now we can delete those layers. We don't need them anymore. Right, select this and generate position for the second lamp. Impert image called lamp 2 and scale it. Now let's generate a position for our bush. And import image called right bush. Adjust it. Okay, good. Let's see what it looks like. Looks great. Okay, now let's put our project in order. Select the building, cut it, go to projection scene 2, and paste it. All right, let's correct the composition sequence. Okay, it's all right now. Now select the furthest riverbank, uh, the tree, and the bush and move them to projection scene one. This is just a helper layer. We can get rid of it. This is the bridge. This one we don't need. Okay, now select the right bank of the river and the bridge and also move them to projection scene one. And also this one. All the other layers, except for the bottom one, you can move to projection scene 2. Good. 
Now let's just create a background. Go to top view, scale the bottom layer along X axis. Okay, let's see it. Uncheck bottom, check back, press OK. Move back the created layer. We need to scale it. Great. Now go to the main composition. And let's animate the camera. Okay, pre-render. Oh, we forgot to replace projection images. See that building behind a tree restored in Photoshop. Also, replace projection image of projection scene 3. Now press 0 to pre-render again. Well done, guys. The scene is complete. Now all there's left to do is to correct the reflection of the water. But this isn't what this tutorial is about. Here we study modeling. Maybe later I'll record a tutorial about how to animate water. Alright? Okay, that's enough for today. I hope this tutorial was useful for you, and with its help, you perfected your modeling skills. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.